Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Open Scad. Only this time we won't actually be making many fancy shapes because today's episode's all about the imports and the exports. So just gonna be moving our fancy shapes around in fancy ways to make even fancier fancy shapes. Yeah. See you guys in a second. Alrighty, so this episode's gonna be kind of different and strange because imports and exports are kind of all weird-like and uh, not not really very good at being linear like most of the stuff we've had already. So I'm gonna be jumping around all over the place. But to start out, we'll start out with exports. Now export. Remember how usually when we press to, to render these, we press F5? That only does a visual render. As far as the computer's concerned, there's nothing here. I just happened to see something there. So if we want to export this, we're going to have to tell the computer to actually render it by pressing F6. And that is pretty quick for this cube, because it's pretty simple. And you see here, this is simple yes... Valid yes. If either of those are no, you have big, big problems that you got to fix. So check that those say yes. And then come up here to export, go to design, and you can export as STL, OFF, DXF, SGG, CSGs, and even the PNGs. I don't know what actually, that might be JPEG. Either way, the only ones we're really interested in is the STL and the DXF, and uh, that's really just because that's the only ones I know how to use. <laughs> so, anyway, but we don't really need to export. Well, I guess I'll export this. It's pretty quick. So you click the export button. You say, uh, let's see, how big is this cube? Five millimeter cube. So then just 5 millimeter cube and save it. It's just like saving it, only it saves as an STL or DXF or whatever you want. And it's saving. There we go. It's saved. But you can get into trouble, though, with stuff like this polyhedron I got here. Now, this looks just fine, but when we go to render it, that happens. And that's a problem, because we don't have a polyhedron anymore. It's gone. Don't like it, gone. So what you can do, go up to the view and push thrown together. You can also do that with F12. And you see all these purpley triangles? Those are bad triangles. We don't want those triangles, because those are what make our stuff fault. These yellow triangles are good, though. So now we got to go through and find which triangles they are that are purple. Uh, since there's only two that aren't purple, I'm just going to go through all of them. And then literally all you have to do is switch two of the points. And you see, that triangle just got fixed. And then this one's another base, so we switch 0 and 1. And now that triangle's fixed. And then... We switch, let's see, is this one got to be switched? Uh, da 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 da, zero and one. Uh, nope, I broke that one. I broke it! I'm sorry! I'll fix it. I fixed it. Alright, so, um, da 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 This is so wonderfully. Oh, I broke it again! Gah! No! Okay, two and three. Now that one's fixed, and then uh, zero and three here. Now it's fixed, and now when we press F6, it's still there, and it's simple and valid, and we can export it and everything. Z design, export STL, pyramid. Probably spelled that wrong. Oh, you know, speaking of spelling things wrong. I suddenly realized of all the videos that I've made I spelled parameters wrong 
I think. I don't know. Fairly certain it's actually spelled like that. If please tell me that's not wrong, because I'd feel so stupid. <laughs> and that would also mean that word spell check is off. But either way, I don't know. I, I I'm not good at spelling. I'm not gonna claim to be good at spelling. So yeah, that's wrong. I think I, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> But accepting that's wrong. Anyway, and there's one more thing we gotta cover about exports, and that's the DXF. DXF is inherently 2D, which means if you try to export anything, there's a DXF with, um, whoa, big cube. That's three dimensional. I, I haven't actually tried, but I assume it won't work. Yeah, see, current top level object's not a 2D object. So we gotta change our cube to square. And then now, when we F6, yeah, see? See? Now the square has no thickness. Whoa, hey! Empty, no, plain, no? I've never seen those before. Cool! I guess I haven't explored much DXF. But now we can export this as DXF and say, um, uh, square. Yeah, square.dxf. Although I have to say, I don't do much DXF work with OpenSCAD, unless it, like, has to be exact numbers. It's really simple. I usually use Inkscape, which, granted, Inkscape isn't a wonderful, perfect tool for this, but, um, it's a lot better. And for people who want to know what that is, we'll get to it later in the episode. But first, we got to go over the imports and stuff. And, uh, I get the feeling I'm gonna mess up a lot doing those. So, to you guys in like two milliseconds. Okay, two milliseconds. Okay, it's been two milliseconds, I think. So now we're gonna do the imports. So there's two different kinds of imports. There's importing other SCAD files, and there's importing files like STL and DXF. And they each use different lines. For the different uh, SCAD imports, I should mention I like to put imports up in the parameters. There's use and include. So to go over, use just lets you use all the modules in it, but include, in, in, whoa, whoa, include is pretty interesting. So you type in include, a bracket, then let's say we want stuff from train. So train.scad. And then you press F5, and suddenly, train.scad is here, as if we were to write it. Because this, basically, the include, for all intents and purposes, makes it to where everything that's in the train.scad file is in this file. But if we switch it over to use, then we only have the modules and nothing getting rendered. You see why this is now blank. But if we type in module train body train body if I remember how to spell that now we get the train body see the only downside to having use instead of include is that you can't change any of the parameters because all you can do if you have use is call other um, modules and that's literally it but it, it, it's pretty nice, especially considering that if you use include, that you have to go into the original model and, like, change the original model so it doesn't render weird stuff. Wow, I got, like, heartburn today or something. Ugh, maybe it's the coffee. Gah, that's nasty. Why, why do I insist on torturing myself with that tepid brew? can't stand coffee. Ugh. 
Sometimes I wish I just naturally have the energy to not do stupidness. Anyway, then there's other kinds of import. There's the importing the STLs and stuff. And these don't set it up to where you can use the uh, model, like the use and include did. Because those basically just made it to where you could use parts of the model later on. But these are actually calling different shapes. Kind of like the um, cube. So let's do uh, Let's see. I made a little thing in Blender. I wonder if it will come through. So we can import. Then import. Parenthesis. Quote. And now you need your... Da, 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 da. Uh, is epic derp your thing here that references the model you made uh, I think I made it called mug test is that what I called it dot stl oh wait no I didn't export it as an stl um, mug handle that's when I definitely exported as STL. Uh, STL. And close it off and. No, ho, ho, I spelled it wrong. Uh, so I got to now hunt it down. Do 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 there, now we have this teeny tiny little shape that I made in Blender. Yeah, because I would not make that in OpenSCAD. Just, just look, look, that, that alone would take an hour. Like, the shape alone would take an hour. And all, yeah, yeah, for fancy stuff like this, I have to say, Blender over OpenSCAD. Well, the only downside to Blender is it's um, it's not very number oriented, and as you can see, this is a really small model. And I wouldn't mind it being a little larger. But the other thing I have we can import. Let's see, doodle dot dxf, and now. It's not there. It does not exist. Here it is. There's Doodle. Yeah, it's a star with a little pentagon taken out of it. I guess that would make it a pentagram because it goes like a whoop and a whoop and a whoop and a whoop and a whoop. But oh well. So uh, let's see. How much time do we have? Five minutes on this one. I think our last recording was. I should really start writing these down. It was ten. Well, um, before we get on to project time, because that's not going to take too long, I guess I'll show you basics, not, not like, full-on tutorialing, but, um, just, like, showing you what they are of the different things I made here. So, the DXF I made here in Inkscape, which is basically the ultimate version of paint, like, MS Paint or I, I, just any of those paint things but it makes shapes and stuff and you can go to file and say export bitmap no you save it as do 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 and you can save it as SVG or you just go down here and you go oh look it's a DXF now woohoo that's about it and then uh, Blenderer which as soon as I figure out how to actually do it well, because I'm still kind of Blender noob, I'll probably do a tutorial on this, but um, basically, you make a shapey shape, and then you go to Export STL, and then you gotta save it in this funky thing. Why does Blender do this? It's weird. It's weird. Oh, anyway. It's project time! And, um, you know what, why not, we already cut this uh, thing into like 50 million pieces, let's make another one, project time, 
So I'll see you guys in another two milliseconds. Yay! Yay. Alrighty, so we are now in project time. And uh, I hope you guys don't mind, but this project got somewhat close to confusing. So I, uh, I printed out my code for it, although I'm going to try to use it as little as possible. But basically, what I was thinking, and really the only thing I could think of for project time, because I'm so wonderfully smart, aren't I? I just can't, I, 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 I'm not very good at thinking of stuff, so, but, what I do know, is that I like steins, because they look funny, and they're like, they got a little lid on a coffee cup, I don't know why, but that's funny, and I always wanted to make one, so let's make one with our coffee mug, so I went in to the coffee mug, the uh, scad, and I, didn't change anything except the fact that I made our mug into a module so I can call it without having to worry about translating and rotating that. But other than that, everything's the same. But now, we need to make our lid. Lid. Did, 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 did. Lid. <sighs> Stupid burps. So annoying in recording. So let's make a module, and then we go over here, and we're going to need our, so the idea is you just, we just make a little lid over here, not pan, pan, yeah you can right click and pan instead of orbit like I'm doing right now, with pan, I don't know if I mentioned that in the first episode, which I really should have, but I probably didn't, cause I'm an idiot. Yup, no, I'm an idiot. But basically, the idea is we make a cylinder that covers this up, and we put our doodle on top, cause it's pretty, and then the handle or um, mug grip is a little grippy thingy. Yeah, see, see. So we're gonna make a lid. First, we're going to need we're going to need a cylinder. Cylinder, cylinder. So, um, how big around is this mug? Uh, I think I made it one six. Yeah, that's height. Height we want to be about ten. So I think I made the diameter of this thing one sixty. Let's see how far. Whoa! It ain't one sixty. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, let's try half that. It's still really big. Um. See, this is why I printed it out, because this is, really, this says 105, oh, that's why, because I also did a funky weird scale up here on the mug the mug so scale, oh, do -do 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 -do. 1.75, why not, didn't get any bigger, oh, one comma, one point. Yeah, I don't work with the commas. Da 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 da. One oh five. One oh five. Yeah, that's a perfect five. Perfect. Yay. Uh, now we want just the lid. So on top of the lid, we want to import and translate. Translate. Don't know by how much. But we know we want our doodle.dxf, but it has to be three-dimensional. So let's do our linear extrude. 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 Linear. Extrude. How do you spell that? Oh... I'm gonna look like an idiot again. <laughs> Not like looking like an idiot. Cause it makes me look stupid. That's why. So, import. We're gonna import our doodle.dxf. DXF. 
And that has got to be that king and thing into thing into thing. Warning linear extrude. Okay, how do you spell linear extrude? I need a T. It's a trude, not an extrude. Jeez. Sometimes I just feel so wonderfully smart that I can't even be smart anymore. It just. You can see what I mean. So now we gotta translate this thing over by a uh, hundred. Oh, wrong way. Negative hundred. That looks pretty close. And then also negative hundred. Negative hundred, 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 negative. Whoa, I can't see that. That's very, very hard to be seen. Color! Yay, color! And you know what? I figured out why I was such an idiot when we were first doing the color. Because most color, the standard, is it's binary. Which means it's 255. But, for some stupid reason, OpenSCAD decides to make it a float. Which means it's any number between 0 and 1, not between 1 and 255. <sighs> so open scat. And then there's also this fancy thing. This last number, outside of the RGB, makes it transparent. Yeah, so this last number, 1, totally solid. 0, totally invisible. Make it half transparent. I think I'll just leave it that way. Cool, we can see it now. And then uh, 150, 40, sure, I'll try 40, 40, looks good. And then like 20, 20, 10. Wait, we got a lid now. Okay, now we need our little handle thingy, jigger bobber thing. So now translate by who knows what so we're just gonna do all zeros again and then our import and then the this is so incredibly boring handle no no not handle stop doing handle mug grip dot stl <laughs> Where you be? Oh, hey, it's hiding. You know, I, I, you, may, you guys may have noticed that suddenly OpenSCAD's colory. That's because I finally updated to the newest version of OpenSCAD. Yay! But now maybe we can see if that resize works resize hey, it looks like it's working so let's see um... twenty millimeters tall oh wait forty um... thirty twenty so the resize is so whoa whoa loading 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 why is this loading? Whoa, that's really wide and not very long. So, but basically, resize is supposed. Oh, it's loading some more. Jeez, jeez, it just keeps loading. It just keeps going. It's so intensive for my old lame computer. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be incredibly awesomely boring now, because we're going to just watch a loading screen. Do, 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 do. That looks pretty good. Now translate it up by, I guess, 40, because that's how tall it is. No. But anyway, resize, from what I can tell, is just like scale. Only instead of a scale factor, you type in the numbers that you want it to be. So, like, this is now 40 tall, 20 wide, and 60 long. Um, I have 
not even used this before because I've had the incredibly old version of OpenSCAD for so long now. But it sounds very useful. And I like it. I like useful stuff. So this has got to be bigger. -er. Oh, more loading! No! Load. Whoa! 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 Okay. Translate this by a hundred. I think that looks pretty decent. You know what? <laughs> Yay! Pretty colors. That thing still looks way too small. Forty, thirty, and then fifty, and more loading screens! Yay! Oh, jeez! Oh, hey, that looks better. So now let's get our mug back in here, and then we're gonna have to translate our lid, and hopefully it looks wonderful. Translate. And the uh, one ziggity. Is that the one ziggity doll? No, it's not. It is looking at my wonders, miraculous cheat sheet. Because I'm a cheater. I'm cheatering. 370. Woo! It's not that tall. <laughs> uh, let's try just 300. It's not even that tall. Uh, 280? Whoa, no. No, no. <laughs> hey, it's 280. So, we have a Stein. Although, I don't like that. That doesn't line up. And we don't have a hinge. But, time is running out, I think. I think it's about 20 minutes. It's hard to tell when you have a video cut into 50 million parts. So now, this is a Stein. We can print and everything. Cool. Huh. Yeah, and it's all made just about... That's that's about it. Oh, hey, I guess we don't need to hashtag that any Mahar. Mahar? Why am I Maharing? But yeah. That's the imports and all the exports and all the stuffity stuff stuff. I guess, since I already kind of... Um, uh, call it Stein. Stein. Probably spelled that wrong. But I guess since I already kind of blew the whistle on me cheating this episode, I guess I may as well show you guys what I cheated on. Hopefully it's still here. Oh, wrong one. Open. Did I not save it? Don't you dare tell me I did not save it. Aha. So, there. That's the only difference. That's it. Anyway. Uh, we went over stuff. Like that stuff. And that stuff. And mostly we did a whole lot of what we done earlier. But. Next episode. Is gonna be. Make sure, I, I recommend that you make sure you don't miss that one. Because we're going to be doing animation. We're going to get stuff that moves. Yay. Yay. So happy. So happy. But uh, I will see you guys next time because we out of town today. So bye. I'll just... I always make my voice weird at the end of an episode. Why is that? Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.